do the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Now, I want to make an altar call. Gone are the days where people just cajole people. You know, when people come like this, I know many of you have heard of the miracles. Many of you will experience it. God wants us to experience it. But let me tell you this. I have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers. In fact, most healing evangelists did not cross 80. Yes, it's true. Those who really, really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people. Hallelujah. Now, nothing wrong with miracles. We're going to be experiencing the hand of God shortly. But it came strong upon I've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell. It's not a lie. It's true. Whether you believe it or not, it's not the issue. I can argue that there's no oxygen in the air. It does not stop it. There are some of you looking at me right now. The overflow, the truth of the matter is that at your current state, without missing words, it is true that it is not heaven you are going to. The goal is not to scare you. This is not the issue of scaring. It's, it's the truth. There's nothing to scare you about. It is true. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Listen carefully. Whosoever's name. It's on earth yet that we celebrate people. Apostle Joshua Selman. Whosoever's name was not found. He was not asked why his name was not there. If your name was not there, that's the end of it. Are we together? Listen. Look, this is a very serious serious issue there has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say Jesus I need you I don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years I'm not asking you how many sick bodies you healed I'm not asking you what name your members call you are we together there are people outside overflow one two three the truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ and a day is going to come whether we like it or not that day the very judge of the earth is coming it's coming if he said it in his word then it is true mm -hmm. come out and be serious with god be serious with god it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious i'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with god are we together i want you to run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is one two Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life. My own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down. But you can choose to say, let tonight be that night. Lord, you have to win this war over my life. Four. 
the Holy Spirit is still speaking to people. You may have money. You may have anointing. You may have cars. But let me tell you this. The Bible says if your hope is only in this life, you are of all men, of all politicians, of all businessmen, of all men of God miserable. There has to be a cry from your heart. Lord, I need you is a sign of humility. Is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. Your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord, I am ready to be serious with you. It's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back. No. In plenty and in none. Leaving you is no longer an option in my life. Hallelujah. I want to lead you. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you this. If you have any loved one who is not saved, I hope their names are in your prayer request. Because I know that some of us, if I ask you what is on your prayer request now, the only thing is wife, husband, promotion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you this. It's, it's funny, but from heaven, you will still see your loved ones in hell. You will know they are the ones. It's not that you are going to look at them and say, I don't know, I don't. It's a lie. You will know that this one is my mother. This one. Now, you can't do anything about those who have gone. But there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life. It is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be, be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. Especially for some of us who are younger ministers, we must be wise. You don't just swallow everything hook, line, and sinker just because it is being done. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years. Then one day they organize one hilarious, pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people. It's a joke. It's a joke. More than healing. More than miracles. More than getting a job. More than all of this is the eternal destiny of men. I am interested in knowing that I'm not praying for someone going to hell. It's a waste. I'm interested in knowing that I'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell. It's a waste. I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell. But the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, it's because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray, Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing 
nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life that's a very good prayer hallelujah come live in me oh my love take over come live in me and I will rise you are a parent here yeah? when your children get to the age of discretion the moment they can think and they can understand lead them to Jesus consciously it is very responsible lead them to Jesus if you have not done so as you go back home don't just say my children are smart call them preach the gospel to them the moment they, are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject Jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected Jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell I rejected him I had a choice but I rejected him Jesus carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here I truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if Jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth I want to lead you in an honest prayer I know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen I'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul I'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart this night I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life I declare that my sins are forgiven I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father Jesus speaking Lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace I ask you oh God you who is the helper of us all help them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you now listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here I just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows I know that there are people attending to them they will have your details I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service I salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same God bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them
Make sure someone is directing them. Hallelujah. Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance it's true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um it's just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that i am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so god must first walk upon our hearts it's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria angelic feathers, gold dust, silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one I remember one night the Lord told me said I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and God said no if I don't take it away one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so God withdrew that experience God only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me He's the greatest model that I have. And I like, to, I like to study his idea. What did he do 
what was captured in his ministry Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19 Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay I'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for Jesus's meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the Bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them I love the ministry of Jesus so the Bible tells us why the people got healed that there was power other versions say virtue there was something that Jesus had that will leave him into the people and the moment it entered them they would discover that their sicknesses were gone are we together hmm. Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power listen it says who went about doing good went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus's ministry and and by the way I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry Jesus's ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven are we together now he said it is expedient that I go why so that the comforter will come it is to your advantage advantageous to you that I go because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha now that mantle that was on Jesus the spirit himself without measure so that we can partake of that spirit and become an extension of his ministry we are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended we are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals do you believe that we are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers we are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good hallelujah the bible says as the father had sent me this is jesus speaking the father sent me i now send you as the father sent me both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping the father sent me with power and every time i spoke something left me to validate what he said he said so also i sent you you see if the power of god does not back up his word is fraud 
it is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and there, wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of jesus but listen to me brothers and sisters if this does not happen we are wasting god's time and we are wasting the time of god's precious people that's why we prepare for all of the meetings especially the miracle service because you have not just come to watch a man you have come to see an extension of the ministry of jesus you have come with your requests you have come with your medical reports you have come with your pain you have come with all kinds of oppression you have come with all kinds of closed heaven and you're saying lord if you are the only one i know who can help me let me tell you your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 mark chapter 1 and verse 21 and they went into capernaum still the ministry of jesus and straightway on the sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how jesus held his crusades he would take out time not just to preach but to teach jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority 
he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure they were designed to respect some people and disobey some people are we together they understand ranking in the spirit so when you issue a command as jesus did and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion are we together yes it is it truly is proof of dominion look at jesus used this the people were astonished they said our priests and rabbis didn't do this they couldn't do this i hope you know that while all the priests used to preach that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing but the words were not potent enough to force them to leave so they kept coming service after service may you not be a man of god that cohabits with demons and that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting and the demons that cause poverty failure whatever it is you share the grace and they share the grace with you and you go out no sir Haba. what then is the excellency of light over darkness your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it that's why some of you bring people here you notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening they want to run away it's not them it's not them the devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again but tonight the devil is a liar it's too late really it's too late 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john let's see what happened and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils he's about to heal now and he came and took her by the hand i love jesus and lifted her up and how many how long immediately. immediately do you know if jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think it's the will of god don't trivialize an anointed hand goodness jesus walks in and says i'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing the condition does not change that contact the bible says immediately the fever did what that means the fever was a living thing it could move abba is it, are you not intelligent people the fever left pastor alpha left me before jesus came the fever was with her they gave it all kinds of interpretation jesus look at what jesus did he didn't talk he just touched the bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak just by making contact alone are you seeing that now some it was about the transference of virtue and it forced the spirit there was a separation that means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means that growth that swelling is a sign that there is something with you ah but the hands of jesus extended through us you see that I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you that means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body and just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go there is an agency that will separate you from that pile you will call it a miracle 
There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now, they brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach. And you just feel, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah. I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities lack of favor delay there are some of us you are trusting god to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with machete and stole her phone i remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead the same way you have been carrying a certificate that's the body where is the spirit component that's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin 
but when the spirit component comes let me tell you this god never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted a spirit entity must assist you even you if you meet a herbalist that herbalist is not alone there is a spirit assisting him you see that yes don't walk through life by your strength and power please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit i would dare not do ministry without the spirit what else will i be doing but with god with god all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone jesus said i'm not alone all these miracles you see i'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Habba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> it will work in zaria it will work in lagos it will work in london it will work in saudi arabia it will work everywhere are we together the spirits that oppress us must give way I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay God I know you will bless me in the name of Jesus may God lift you amen I just, well, it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the Bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah I believe the Lord I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life I want you to be tired and say God will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far Lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire Lord will you leave me will I leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor I believe him I believe that he's a mighty man I believe he's awesome I have seen his hand I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen I present to you the same God yesterday today forever I present to you the same healer yesterday today forever I present to you the same deliverer I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus I present to you your destiny changer I present to you your destiny maker I present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory 
ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor step into a new level of favor Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve. I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor I prophesy them upon you now I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you hallelujah hallelujah there is the grace for favor those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that 
had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me? I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Papa. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, that anointing that must come on you, I declare that it comes on your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Producing strange results. It comes upon your head right now. It comes upon your head right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor i said let's do an experiment i told him i said i will pray for you for favor return next friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens i will give you money agreed he said yes and i prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on monday monday that's the monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor hallelujah it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir her man did not
not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's Nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving now practice all these things you are not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how Satan wants to trap men. He would trap you and make your life miserable. Let's release this favor on our families. You have received it for yourself, but let it get to your family. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. My father, every family that is represented here by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let there be a release of favor. Let there be a release of favor. Favor on every family. Favor on every family. Listen. Sometimes, eh? It is not warfare that destroys. It is even how favor works. Favor can kill to make sure that one person rises. Some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor i release favor favor concerning my building project Like a shield, you surround us with favor like a shield. Pray, make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Favor like a shield. Favor in my academics, pray. Favor over my job. Lord, favor, favor, favor. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me 
Let me tell you how you know it is favor. Listen. Favor is not one time. When somebody just says, hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water. What? That's just goodness. Favor is I want to keep blessing you. I want to continue doing this. Many of us, what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor. Someone just appears once and just says, look, I want to help you. And it never happens again. When it is favor, a process is ignited. It keeps following like that. It's true. Study the things in your life. You'll be able to separate goodness from favor. There are things that just happen one time. But favor, favor continues. So I'm seeing fire on my hands. And I want to pray. Because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen. Whether you're on a job or whatever it is. You see, these hands you see. They are, it's a mystery. It says, the the hand of God it was with this hand God made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you I want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because for many of us we are getting results but our results are too small I stretch these hands the fire that the Lord put upon this hand in the name of Jesus, I release it. Let it come upon your hands. Let it come upon your hands. Representing your job, your academics, your business. Whatever it is that you're involved in. I release, I stretch my hands. May that, may that fire come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does God open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone, overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him, Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him, there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him, Thy kingdom come, thy will be. 
the Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus remove that evil you have put now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen there will be such a massive 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 deliverance now let it not surprise you I've explained to you what this thing is it's a separation you should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season 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 shake the balaka roka to si abakata leka paraka to sada brashana balana ba leka proska na barush a new season of the spirit is around this area a new season a new season god is breaking something here a new season a new season a new season someone is entering it right now a new season a new season young lady you are entering a new season a new season by the spirit a new season a new season a new season, a new season. A new season, something is breaking. Breaking. I don't need to walk everywhere. I'm just walking as the Holy Ghost is leading me. A new season, something is breaking. Breaking, breaking. A new season. There is a cloud of glory. There is a cloud of glory. A new season. No force can stand it in your life. There is an anointing here. There is an anointing here. A new season. Something is breaking here. Right now in the name of Jesus. Something is breaking here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. It must go. Shake it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Shake it. Take it. Take it. And take it. New season. New season. I stretch my hand, something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you. Breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit, leave that lady now. In the name of Jesus.
command every force every spirit I'm going to pray for you listen listen as I pray for you listen it doesn't matter where you are provided there is a spirit entity that is waging war in your life let me tell you the truth by the God whom I serve as I make this declaration the words will live like a sword from me and it will come and create that separation I want you to bring them out overflow one two three wherever in the mighty name of Jesus the God of Jeshurun I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three let them go now let them go now witchcraft manipulations of darkness in the name of Jesus I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out Jesus Christ if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family Covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. And I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the Spirit going to all your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three, just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three, I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus overflow three are you ready I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of Jesus 
everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three supernatural liberty supernatural liberty and outpouring of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please I want to pray the Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people every season certain things happen. Every September somebody must die. Every three, three years somebody married must divorce. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do one two get ready three broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um please this man I don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick I may not have time to prophesy to individuals I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus I curse that devil I'm not seeing a human being I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us coming here sir. you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i traveled before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you. Huh? Yes, uh, is that true? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you. Yes, sir. That thing is a charm. Yes, it's sir. not a it's charm. Yes. Native yes. doctor. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, That's sir. what will even kill you. Yes, sir. It's not going to solve your problem. Yes, sir. The people doing it are well meaning. Yes, sir. But the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it. Yes, and you violate it will destroy you. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? You have, you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you. Listen, let me tell you. When you are pressed, we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall. Going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction. If Satan gives you tea here, he will hold a knife and stab you at the back. Father, by the mercy of God, I pray for this man. Let him not die. 
in the name of Jesus I close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of Jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not Agnes don't come here please your name is Agnes where are you from I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life this attack is coming from Calabar huh are you hearing what I'm saying sir. I have to pray for you where are you from Cross River you are from Cross River yes sir. Come. I must pray for you Kai, there is somebody the Lord is setting the person free I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person you are here now in the name that is above all names I'm serious don't think I'm just hyping you in the name of Jesus whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we're going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious father let this lady be free right now in the name of Jesus Christ come you this lady come you love Jesus huh? yes, sir. come you I, I'm not condemning you eh? look at me you have to be very serious with God one two friends look at me God has delivered you many times you would have destroyed yourself huh? You're a small girl, you need to love God with all your heart. Please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you, eh? I love you, and that's why I'm telling you this. You need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State. I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uprooting every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State Shekete Keta Katali Akata in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life very bad luck and the Lord wants to help you 
Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, bad luck be gone now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your mercy is everlasting, undeniable. You are mindful of Who am I that you hear my cry when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of? Yeah. Who am I? You're the source of my strength, not you. The strength of my life, not you. My hope and my joy, my confidence, you. you're the source of my strength, you. the strength of my life, you. my hope and my joy, you. my confidence. You. Oh. That means the operation of a course cannot be studied intellectually. You must be able to study from the standpoint of the realm of the spirit. A course is a mystery. The second thing I want you to know about a course is that a course is a spiritual force. A course, listen carefully, is a spiritual force. A cause is a spiritual force. Are we together? Number three, a cause has magnetic characteristics. Like you're talking magnetism, an attracting power. It can attract certain things to its victim. I'm taking out time to help you understand this. Let's take it very carefully tonight. A cause is a mystery. A cause is a spiritual force. Then a cause is magnetic. It has an attracting power. Number four. A cause is always negative in its manifestation. A cause is always negative in its manifestation there's no such thing as positive cause no what is a cause a cause is an invocation a cause is an invocation comma a programming a cause is an invocation a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities to the life of its victim a cause is a what an invocation a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities pay attention and listen carefully in the life of its victim it always has negative effects on the life of its victim a cause can be
made manifest in the life of a person through utterances let's be very fast utterances and pronouncements utterances and pronouncements the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that utterances and pronouncements have prophetic implications whether from the positive dimension or the negative dimension every time an utterance is made the bible tells us it has an effect that is supported from the realm of the spirit that every time i open my mouth to utter an utterance the bible tells us whether it was done in ignorance or it was done intelligently that there is a support system in the realm of the spirit that helps to back the outcome of that pronouncement so the bible says say not before an angel i made a mistake causes can find expression through written words this is largely seen in not much of this is understood in christianity but when you study world religions you find out that there are many religions that um, work like a legal system they have from slates to books to mantras to manuals and all kinds of things and all of these gadgets and these documents are a system and whenever they are invoked in a certain dimension and a manner they have capacity to program wars upon the life of the people these are the basic ways that the bible reveals to us that a cause can be communicated to an individual now very quickly what is the character of a cause I'm being very, I'm, I'm talking tonight like a lecturer because I want us to pray and I really want everybody to understand this. It is easy to know that a territory, listen carefully, maybe let me change the word and call it a siege. Let me change the word and call it woes so that it will psychologically relate to you. But the name is a cause. If I change the name, it's only for your comfort, not to change the reality. It is called a cause are we together our idea of a cause is someone who offends you then you make a pronouncement in anger and it brings a cause no no it is that idea that makes us feel guilty say no 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 i didn't offend anybody no in this world once you are alive you have to find out what happened before you because you can be a victim of a story that predates your existence are we together now it is easy to know that a personality a family a territory is under a cause the first indication of the presence of a cause in a life and a family is patterns repetition of negative patterns that seem to veto the individual's prayer life that seem to veto the individual's supposed spiritual activities please pay attention patterns patterns the classic indication of curses and blessings in the bible is patterns patterns the same way the same way you can know that a man, a place, an individual is blessed. There is a track record of frequent happenings regardless of the condition. Are we together? Yeah. So we look at the life of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Israel of God, and we see a pattern. Everyone who spoke against them was judged by God. There was something upon them every time they violated his dictates they were given to their enemies it was a pattern patterns are very common in the lives of people now we just pretend that they are not there you see let me tell you something one of the major reasons why people do not rise in power and faith listen carefully is because of insincerity when you want to approach spiritual things, you must be open-hearted and sincere. 
are we together your heart must be broken and contrite this pattern ranges from all kinds and it happens everywhere there are patterns as far as finances are concerned there are patterns as far as family lives are concerned you turn and look around the average family in Africa and you will know that there are patterns now pay attention and follow me to the end of the lecture don't be quick to just say no, 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 no. But it doesn't exist. I think I did something about it. A cause, causeless. If it still remains, the cause is there. A cause, causeless. A cause, causeless. If I have a boil in my hand and I go to doctor, if I come to you and I have a boil in my hand, you will tell me that this boil is a reaction, it's an effect of something. Is that true? The boil is showing that something is wrong. So the cause is not the failure. The failure is a message. The patterns are a message. They are not the cause. The cause is spiritual. The cause is an atmosphere. It's like a cloud. It's like a mantle that an individual can carry. Has capacity to break barriers. Has capacity to follow you. It can pursue a man. It can overtake a man. The Bible personifies a cause. In Deuteronomy 28, you see that he spoke to them. A list of blessings and then causes. He said it will pursue you and overtake you. Travel to London. Travel to UK. Travel to your village. Go to school. Marry. Be wherever. It can follow you. It has that capacity. That limitless ability. A quality only given to spiritual things. A cause is not failure. A cause is not barrenness. A cause is not retrogression. All those things are messages. They are symbols that signify the presence of such an atmosphere upon a man. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Joshua chapter 7. Let's look at it very quickly. If something interesting happened there. We'll read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, and then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of what? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against who who carried something god was angry against help me now I, I, there's a revelation i want to show you who participated in the loot help me did they loot as a congregation did he consult them to loot the bible says he smuggled an item that he was prohibited to carry correct and then what happened the anger of the lord was kindled against who verse 10 and the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Because they were defeated. A small city defeated them. And Joshua went to God. Israel had who sinned? It never said Achan had sinned. We are Bible students. It never said Achan had sinned. He said Israel had sinned. And they have transgressed my covenant which I commanded them for they have even they, 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 they have even taken up their costing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff verse 12 therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies why? they started by taking something accost and in verse 12 they themselves were one man whose eyes saw something and he said no I can't let this thing go like that and he smuggled it quietly and put it in his pocket and God was watching and God said Israel you have seen and all of them think of the innocent people that died in the war they were all preparing 
Oh, God will give us, I mean, if God gave us Jericho, what is AI? A small town. And in their midst, someone smuggled an item. And all of a sudden, they went to battlefield. Imagine them moving warriors. And they were utterly defeated. And Joshua, the embarrassment was too much. And he went back to God crying. And God said, stand up, please. This is not the issue of prayer. You need to understand. I need to give you understanding. Don't just lie down crying for nothing. He said, Israel has seen. They took something and by this time, he said, they themselves were a cause. He said, neither will I be with you anymore, except he destroyed the accursed from among you. The accursed was no longer a thing, but a person. Accursed is real. I wish they were not. I would have just told you I was joking. Let's be serious now. Accursed is real. Don't you see them in your family? I know you act like they are not there. Don't you see them around? Listen carefully. Don't you see them in the life of pastors? Don't you see them in the life of apostles, prophets, great people? A curse does not mean you are a sinner. Write it down. You have to get this. A sinner like one possessing the name. Listen, listen. I want to teach you something. Just pay attention. Whatever you don't understand, just keep following. A curse is not necessarily a symbol that an individual personally sinned against God. There are many families, there are many individuals carrying things in their lives that they can laugh around and pretend in church that this thing does not exist, it doesn't happen. But we are watching with our eyes. Remember the Bible says a cause causeless shall not come. Meaning if it comes, don't just probe the effect. What is the cause? Back to my boil example. So I have a boil and my hand is swollen. And I run to the doctor and say, doctor help me. And the doctor looks at it and smiles. And says, ah, your white blood cells are fighting something. Are we together now? They are fighting something or um, what they call this thing fever sign ah pastor jt good to see you i didn't realize it was him hallelujah and then fever sign and then he tells me that that fever sign is a sign that there's war somewhere when others are feeling cold you are feeling hot correct you try to stand in the sun you start feeling cold again you don't know what is wrong with you that reaction is a sign that a war is going on somewhere whoever wins you will soon know if you don't recover it's a sign you are not winning and that means you must seek assistance and the doctor will say okay i need to introduce something in your life and then he introduces something and all of a sudden things start changing and you cannot enter your body to know whether you are winning so you use the absence of that evidence as a sign that you are recovering all of a sudden listen a boil that refused to go you put rub it refused to go you put local herbs are we together palm oil it refused to go immediately you know something is wrong this is not sometimes it can even mock you and go and come out or come out somewhere else the boy is saying it doesn't matter where I come out I can come out anywhere for as long as what is causing it is still there but when the doctor explains to you the issue is not the boil the issue is and sometimes he will not even ask you to bust it he introduces something to your system then a boil causeless starts drying you watch it dry and it disappears and within a week you never believe anything is there then you now confirm by the absence of that thing that it is gone so don't sit down and tell me no boil is swelling we are all watching it grow you say no boil we are seeing it we are not stupid a cause causeless shall not stand you may not appreciate this because somebody is paying your bills now you may not appreciate this because no matter how careless you are you don't sow but somebody's harvest is paying for you so you are thinking you are the one sowing a day will come you will be exposed to a reality where you will now see that your life is dependent on the outcome of your understanding 
there are patterns that should not happen to believers if they are happening something should be dealt with it should not be ignored it should be understood and dealt with brothers and sisters hear me i tell you the truth by the authority of the lord jesus christ causes are real yes they are yes they are there are families today that all the men in that family never move forward they never rise they never become anything Ejimi, the men do not have to be irresponsible they are sincere people very sincere people there are families where every month per year somebody must die regardless of how sincere they are loving people it can even be after a church service on their way back they die after a prayer meeting rattling in tongues for hours you can't say they don't love god there are families if a man looks at you and says i love you even that man what will happen to him that night he will never repeat that statement again now he doesn't know why you too you don't know why you think the issue is okay am i too fat let me be on a diet no you are trying to rub palm oil on our boil remember our story I know many hard-working men hey, Jimmy, they have been working in their 20s sincere godly people till today they are begging there are people who start building 20 years it has not reached the level no brothers and sisters we are intelligent how many graduates you see in a family seven graduates the only employed person in that family is a driver are they so stupid they are not lazy they will tell you they are not lazy most times we think it's because they are unserious and people erroneously say don't forget it's just that they are not hard working please be careful some of you as you are sitting now if you are to be sincere you know things are not all right there are families when you give birth to people things happen there are pastors hey, Jimmy, they refuse to deal with these things and they get into ministry anointed remember my story born again filled with the holy spirit working miracles but still oppressed by demons i went to people quietly and i said what is wrong they said don't oh, don't worry man let me tell you i don't think there are few people here that quote scriptures more than me the demons didn't respect it shocking call the name of jesus nothing happened how do you call the name of jesus on a crusade ground and somebody is walking out of a crutch and you call it for your life and nothing happens i knew i needed to understand something your victory starts when you are humble when you have you say no 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 there has to be a puzzle to this equation it can be god mysterious sicknesses there are people today carrying hepatitis a b and whatever is they don't have when you go to the hospital and say i have hepatitis they ask you who had it in your family even genetics support the reality of transgenerational transference there is such a possibility the fact that you look like your father should teach you something about the realm of the spirit the fact that you look like your mother and your born again did not change your facial appearance is a spiritual reality something listen something should tell you that this thing is real now, you better trust the holy spirit all of us men of god are not older than you by more than 20 30 years the holy spirit is an ancient spirit is god's own spirit he was there when this thing started hallelujah a curse causeless shall not stand I have watched sincere people, hey Jimmy, bound sincerely. There are pastors today as anointed as whatever. You look at them, you think it's the Holy Spirit. No growth, no increase. And it's not only ministry, it's a pattern. Anointed, born again, nothing happens. No growth, no increase. How many people have they thrown away? from they went to us 
just when they went they went with complete papers as soon as they were vetting people one got missing and you know that they did here he said look let me explain to you my papers were complete they said come and explain to your embassy in nigeria and they drive them down what of all these devilish things that fly around people's body fibroid lump hiv cancer see it killing men now once a man is 45 years old he starts getting afraid ask the doctors they will tell you prostate cancer once people start getting to 45 46 they are now they are now afraid because of cancer once a lady is approaching 28 29 even doctors start saying marry fast though because any moment from now and every stranger will start growing so once you are 30 and you are not married they will tell you look there's no room to hearing god just hurry up and get all your children fast how many do you plan to have five you need at least 10 years hurry up and catch up it's nonsense the devil is a liar this night patterns how about barrenness a trace of it how about fruitfulness but that not productive you give birth to 10 children all of them are useless there are patterns the ladies must get pregnant out of wedlock before the wedding. Now, they are innocent and the condition that leads to the pregnancy is the same thing that happened to someone else. They don't know themselves. But it happened. I have counseled people like that. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing as that. And tonight, God wants to show us that there is a system in the kingdom where people can have dominion. It is not just about what Christ has done. It is that we can be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in our heart. We have claimed things that we don't know anything about. Let me tell you something about ministry in Zaria that you do not know. I think it was you, Sam, I was talking to. Minis the lifespan of successful ministry in Zaria is three years. You are a ministry in Zaria. If you survive three years, you know the mystery of continuity. After three years, something must arise attempting to rubbish your life. A scandal. Are we together? One kind of failure. Something will just evolve out of nowhere. There are so many people, especially music artists, They've risen from Zaria. Men of God risen from Zaria. But you don't know where they are today. You see a musician just appears. And for six months he's been invited everywhere. And after that you just go stale. Next. We are waiting for the next person. <laughs> yeah. There is a level the devil pegs men. And pegs their destiny. You never rise beyond a level. There are families is defined for as long as you oscillate within that ambient of relevance it's okay but try to cross it that line will draw you back and say are you blind don't you see that there's a long line are we together men don't live beyond certain times the moment you are 35 death comes see i saw this pattern in my own extended family the only person in my father's family that is alive now is him and one of his sisters. I've shared it with you. Very sincere people. None of them died a good death. Mysterious sicknesses that will rubbish your life and none of them ever rose to certain levels. Some of your fathers are like that. They started working from 22 as it is now if you send them five thousand they will kneel down and say thank you it's a cause it's a cause some of you are in school as students but they are calling you from home anything for this month you say mommy just take it easy we keep laughing and say there is nothing wrong see let me tell you you don't deal with it you marry it follows you there you don't deal with it you because as you are married, once you are standing with your necktie, two of you are bringing everything you represent. 
and you move into the house. Do you know this is why people erroneously call people witches and wizards? It is because they are open to the prophetic, but because they do not have the accurate understanding of the word of God, they see the spirit that is behind that activity and mistaking it for the individual carrying it out. So they say, no, 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 no. And truly what they are saying is not a lie. They say your trouble started from the day this lady, one lady come. All of a sudden, you said you will marry her. You now got married. You were a millionaire. In five months, five months, you are looking for 10,000 to buy a new shoe. Mysterious things happen. Your first car got missing. The second car, police, police caught it. The third car is somewhere else. Your truck capsided like that. The driver slept off. Listen. And your life is reduced back. And then you now go to a man of God. I'm not, I'm not talking against men of God. You know I love the body of Christ. But you go somewhere and then the man, genuine man of God, now looks and says, Ah! Who did you marry? Tosi. <laughs> Thank God you are even still alive. It's just an example, darling. Just an example. Are we together now? Give me your hand. Now. Run away from me. You want to deny me now, Tosi. Be nice to me. Be a nice wife. Are we together? And then the man. You see, men will consult quietly. They will announce in public. Is the anger you see publicly. The man now returns home. Good evening, darling or honey. Say, see, let me tell you. I am throwing everything out of my life that is causing me failure. He stops eating your food because he believes that eating your food is why he's now having high blood pressure. And this lady is sincere. She loves God. Are we together now? And they cannot. Why will you call such a nice woman a witch? She may not be a witch, but she's connected to something that is causing that effect. Plus, the one you are now bringing. We have not even talked about the one on the man. Hybrids of different formulas that are as a result of different spiritual things. And you find out that things don't work in people's lives. That's why in certain villages, they even apportion certain regions and tell you they are what? Cost. It doesn't happen in your village. Where they isolate a group of people and say these people, whoever marries, will either die or something. And sincerely speaking, you will go and marry out of bold face and say love is love. Love is blind. And Jimmy said marriage will open your eyes. You now go and get married and find out that after the marriage, two weeks after the marriage, you are not hearing again. One month after the marriage, you can't walk again. You see that? Tell me why a man who has been working in the civil service for 30 years should not have up to 1 million in his account. How many children grew up with him? Two children, he's still poor. There are families, win lottery, get anything, they will still be poor. It has nothing to do with money. It's a system. Listen, the system of causes outlive those who caused it. It can outlive it. The primary purpose of a cause is to create a system for transgenerational allegiance. Transgenerational allegiance. Allegiance to deities. Ultimately, an allegiance to Satan. A system to create transgenerational allegiance. Our grandmothers and great-grandmothers, you hear of one woman giving birth to 14 children, never went to a hospital, no CS. Out of those 14 children, one was a set of twins, one was a set of triplets, and truly she gave birth to them in the midst of fire and you still see her a mother of 13 children standing her stomach is as straight as an arrow no fibroid no nothing why because before the delivery there is a priest who asks the god and say remember just like we agreed we have been serving you half of our guinea corn is hanging on the tree in respect to your demands so whatever look upon that guinea corn and that goat that disappeared and pleased this woman now all of a sudden missionaries had passion but no intelligence they came to africa now 
we love the missionaries but don't forget that they were very limited people say they died of malaria are, are you are you with what you know now was it malaria that really killed them they didn't die of malaria malaria was the servant like a tray that carried that charm you just come in and all of a sudden you organize a crusade and say stop worshiping this deity 300 years old of worship and allegiance you have the gods to bring the head bring everything burn it <laughs> and an old woman is just looking at you and pitying you jesus saves jesus heals they leave you quietly because they know that ignorance can alienate a man from the life of god and the moment you finish first you die all the followers die the remaining return and they say look this thing does not work if i didn't know this i would have been a failure all my life are we together i have seen this thing happen with all humility I don't know how many of my extended people especially from my paternal side that I can look and say this person is successful today no no causes can come directly from God <laughs> directly from God this is not the cause of the law the cause of the law is not the, all the cause there is in the Bible. Directly from God. Number two, causes can be transgenerational. Products of ancestry. What we call ancestral causes. There is such a thing as ancestral causes. There is such a thing number three self-inflicted causes self-inflicted causes there are programmings that can come upon the lives of people which is a product of self-infliction the cause that we call the cause from God is what I also call a sinner's cause. Every sinner is under a cause. Everyone who has not acknowledged Jesus Christ, please hear me carefully, as his Lord and Savior, believe it or not, you are under a cause. You are under a cause. What is the cause? The dominion of evil perpetually remains above you is a cause the moment you are not in christ you qualify for the very cause that is upon creation that from dust thou art and to dust thou shall return that tons and thistles shall come upon your ground and with the the sweat of your brow shall you feed there is a cause that is upon creation it cannot be taken away you can only be exempted from it hear me please that is the reason why the old earth will be purged there is a reason why fire will purge this earth there is a reality that is hanging upon this earth right now individuals born by default in sin did my mother conceive me he says and you are a victim of it mortality is a cause that came with creation there is such a possibility that a man can extend his life you can access the reality of god's life failure the cause if you are not in christ listen you are not in christ you qualify for the sinner's cause it's not something bad it's not even about what you did it's a reality God's own pronouncement upon creation as a result of men alienating his ways. And then I said number two, ancestral causes. 
ancestral causes are products of violating the terms and agreements products of violating the terms and agreements that constituted the basis for mutual relationship between men and deities there was such a provision in Africa as a continent where men fraternize with deities you see that in ancient Babylon you see that in Egypt the sun god Ra alongside thousands of other gods there was a very intelligent spiritual system of fraternity with them an agreement a covenant causes operate on legal grounds they don't operate by mistake they operate on legal grounds there is a legal system in the kingdom and don't forget righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne a system that God is obliged to honor who can stand against the Lord no one can no one will that's the liberty he's bringing to you tonight who can stand against my king no one can no one will oh When you walk out of this, many of you will begin to see things change in your life in remarkable ways. Remarkable ways. Your prayer life will be so reduced to only worship because you will search around and see that there are no issues of concern again. There is such a possibility that a man can sit down, bless on the left and on the right, an effulgence of Zoe, the reality of God's life, practically at work in a man. And they look at you and say, Pastor Alpha, is it true that you came from Kogi State with this rest roundabout? The witches left you, they didn't leave me, I came out. I access the mystery because they are still there. If they left you, they will leave everybody there. You mean you come from this state and you are not a drunkard? No, the drunkenness is still there. I came out by a mystery of exemption. this house I built it at what age 27 where did you get the money from the only person that built a house here was the king of the village and he built it at 63 and you tell them well 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 welcome to a new order where intelligence creates reality do you know you would die and you say no no the same mystery that built the house without resistance keeps the house You had the testimony of the gentleman diagnosed of prostate cancer and all of a sudden is that prostate cancer he would have died like a chicken then we will say how can Allah Sharia? you see what how we convince ourselves as if the will of God is a mystery I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil I don't know poverty does not look like good oppression does not look like good no, sir. I counseled a couple of me. They got married. Their wedding night, that's supposed to be a night of joy. Their very wedding night, a stranger walked physically to the woman and told her the same thing I did to your mother is what I would do to you. She, true story, she got pregnant according to what she told me. They were even happy people were dancing and in the night this stranger came again and this is all he did on her stomach and she got up in the morning bleeding profusely as if she would die machines don't diagnose causes machines 
cannot detect the presence of demons they only detect the effect of their presence we went to Ida we always go there for Pastor Alpha's conference and I remember one of the years when we traveled there he took us on a tour and began to explain to us we went to greet the king the man refused to see us later on and then we went somewhere and I saw far remember market square one market square that we went I saw it there with my eyes and people were passing whoever did the sacrifice just scattered it there witchcraft is real if you see anybody rising he is exempted or yet to be a victim you hear what I said exempted or or the devil is allowing their ignorance to keep them going while they laugh at others I say it's because you don't know the day will do you it will scatter and rubbish you into pieces there are people who are so irrelevant as far as their impact to hell is concerned the devil said just allow them to be busy they think it's because they have overcome the day something about your life and ministry strikes hell you will see the reaction immediately you can be praying your childish prayer and the devil say focus on those who are really just leave that person and you can convince yourself that because nothing has happened you say no 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 I'm, i know what to say i don't talk too much and things happen the day that you ever say anything that strikes a chord in hell suddenly strangers will come to you and say don't do it again <laughs> brothers and sisters if you see men rise as if satan does not exist it's not it's because they have accessed a mystery that immunes them this is what i'm teaching you tonight but to refuse that this does not exist is the beginning of deception beginning of deception The Western world has been cheated in this area in a very big way. Because of advancement in medicine and advancement in all of these things. Oh, they leave it to all the spiritists and the, uh, the, the transcendental meditators. And all of them come. The nation of America, listen, their fathers understood this mystery. They walked in power. And when Satan found out that that whole generation had covenanted their lives to God, he left them and started growing with their children. He said, let's leave the fathers to die in the crusade ground. And he started growing with the children. And all the children came up with all kinds of things, you know. I mean, there's, if, if you are sick right now, you cough, ambulance is coming in five minutes. And so they don't believe it now. Look at the disaster happening in the Western world. Where people can kill themselves on YouTube shoot their children effects they laughed at us in Africa before that we are the ones who used to behave like that you carry arrows now they have a reprobate mind a generation successfully captured by hell a cause is a mystery a very deep mystery hallelujah how many beautiful ladies do you know? Beautiful, godly, God-fearing. The painful part is nobody has even come to say, Kai, my dear, you know you're a pretty lady. It's not a lie. You know what I'm saying. It's not a lie. How many parents went to all kinds of rivers and were dipped how many times to be pregnant? There is a system in the kingdom for exemption. But the first key is to acknowledge that there is such a reality on earth. A lot of people don't believe causes are real. It's foolish to believe sickness is real and poverty is real and not believe causes are real. The same boss brought all of them. How you know you are free from causes is that you also don't fall sick and you don't get poor if you can still get poor as a believer then make no mistakes to say a cause cannot come are you getting what i'm saying if as a believer i say are you born again yes are you blessed no i'm poor they say okay it's okay 
with time it will change are you a believer yes are you sick oh very sick are you a believer yes is there a manipulation of that no 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 are we not mocking ourselves what is the difference between sickness poverty and causes if we do not get this we will destroy ourselves every time i look at this next generation of koinonia our little ones do you know what i tell myself we have to run fast and correct everything that our parents could not correct in our lives before our children come correct it fast i look at these dear ones and i'm imagining a time that they will now start growing and all of a sudden they will become victims our parents were sincere people but they didn't know the way out so many of us we are in the middle of two generations correcting the errors of the father and setting precedence for a new generation is worth enduring are you hearing what i'm saying hear me you are you are hearing this message tonight if you are a lady here as you are hearing it just just know that you are you are hearing it not just for yourself but you are hearing it for a generation you ignore what i'm saying it will pain you to watch your children go through this and you will remember you had a chance to be free no. i cannot allow my children go through this let me suffer it let me go through it no matter what it will cost me if i go through the delay let it be that is me that went through for them so that these dear ones will move forward if i go through the poverty let it be that is me that will suffer it but not that i will bring a child and watch your child die like a chicken and turn and say father what did i do wrong and you say me too that's how i saw it everybody shout no way How many students do very well? Secondary school, brilliant people. Wayek, nine papers. They step into the university and all of a sudden, 100 level result, nine Fs. You think they are dull. They are conducting tutorials. But they enter the exam hall. They only remember in the night when the exam has finished. It's not everybody who is lazy. Let me tell you. What of recurrent sicknesses? There are people today, there is no month they don't fall sick. Go to the hospital, they will tell you nothing is wrong. Now the doctors are wiser. Thank God for spiritual people becoming doctors. They don't waste time again. The moment they diagnose you, they see that you have come once, twice. They'll say, do you know what? Find any available crusade and run quickly. Go to the front early and stand there and trust God to wipe your tears. That's why we need more spiritual people getting into our hospitals so that they will not allow people to die like chickens i look forward to times where god will give men and women of power the moment you are a midwife helping a woman give birth and the baby is not coming out you detect by the spirit this is witchcraft right there shagato soto labaya help that lady and all of a sudden you find out that that woman gives birth koinonia today is not rising because there are no demons let me tell you make no mistakes only god knows how many powers try to kill me every day i told you all the time only god knows how many people take my names to shrines oh it has never happened in israel there was a woman called the widow of nain what killed her husband she had only one child one child the husband now died the child now died on her way going jesus saw and said no this is not the issue of burial i need to change something here there are families you will see them in a community 32 people only one percent of them are men and all the men are mad men they are not their, their brains are not even in place again madman is a woman that pays the school fees of children is a woman that drives car is a woman that builds a house is a woman that does everything all the men become useless you see them playing draft in the morning and laughing and taking beer it's a cause
let me tell you it's a cause there are families with a cause where the children never see their grandparents either they are in exile or they die please tonight you are going to offer yourself as a living sacrifice that will change this you, you will have to be a wicked person if you allow your children go through this thing I'm telling you what of poverty what of poverty there are many people who went to Harvard came back anything they start die the day you want to start importing it that's when government banned it why was it exactly others have finished making their money just when you were about to start what of people in ministry they think it's normal everybody they raise disappoints them there is a spirit they raise so many men but they disappoint them there is no helper a man will be 30 years in ministry who has become a father in the faith you should have people to you should not beg for bread again but there is no man you call for help there is nobody some of you see some of these women walking on the street 71 years carrying firewood where are the children she gave birth to where are they one is in prison the other one is security somewhere and they are about to throw him out you find families where a lady has seven children from seven different men seven different men she honestly does not even know which one is the husband of which because a madman will just rape her somewhere and sometimes she can even be coming back from the house of God it's a programming it looks like a coincidence what kind of coincidence keeps happening you start business you crash you always lose money you always lose joy you always lose peace you always run into trouble they are chasing a thief the moment they pass you that's when police will say from this place pack all of them you were innocent it's a programming you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh Kadosh you were mighty on your own Break forth down fountains of the deep and we have you are mighty on your throne. Listen, help me. How can a man lose a job in 1999 until now he has not gotten a job? Is he that dull? see let me tell you something sit down if you can we'll soon stand up and pray listen listen to me when you study the laws of mechanics sir isaac newton postulated a law we call it the first law of mechanics and this is what it states that everybody continues in its uniform motion or a static state right it remains there until compelled by an external force to act otherwise through the law of inertia that if I leave this in one place theoretically speaking thank you I should come and find it in one place after a long time that's how the, your destiny will be if you sit down and you are wishing it will remain like that the only thing that will be changing is your age but your condition will remain the same how about men have you seen families where the men never leave their parents homes there is such a thing they bring their wife all the cousins and their wives to their father's house you see that the house they are staying was the grandfather's house the guy works in NMPC but cannot rent a good house 
you ask him why you say okay I'll do something about it 45 years he's still in his father's house they share the parlor they compartmentalize the kitchen if you buy your first car 50 years is that a testimony no you build a house at 55 is that a testimony take seriously what I'm saying what of ministries there are churches that this cause of poverty has still landed even on the ministers you will see a church with members but prosperity zero when it comes to finances you will never see increase in that area but tonight God put this body in my heart because it's time for somebody's lifting yes it is yes it is yes it is barrenness every look at me I want to tell you something now and please listen we are here to help ourselves but let me give you an information every case of barrenness is spiritual E-V-E-R-Y every case of barrenness is spiritual let me repeat it every case of barrenness is spiritual so says the bible the remedy for every case of barrenness was spiritual and god opened the womb of rachel and god opened the womb of leah and god shut the womb of a milka david's wife every so that when some things happen to you you don't waste time you know where to go for to look for help quickly quickly recurrent deaths i remember one lady i can't remember um who now but there used to be a lady i remember the story faintly now that was dedicated to snakes literally snakes and the way snake molds this molting it happens to her physically the outer skin begins to you know swell like peel i'm not talking of all just skin irritation literally like a snake molting it's good to marry from the house of god because the job has been done you hear what i'm saying it's a good advice i'm telling you no matter what is pursuing you bring it to the house of god the house of God is a factory where true solution is provided. When the devil wants to rubbish you, he makes you successful and then he goes to connect you with a very wrong person and your life begins to know life. A cause causeless shall not stand. Self-inflicted causes are results of ignorance and disobedience. Ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience self-inflicted causes are products of ignorance and disobedience no matter how born again you are if you don't tithe your heavens are closed that for sure whatever you think about the situation notwithstanding seeing then that these realities are true what provision is in the kingdom to bail men out and exempt them i'm going to show you the system in the kingdom designed to set men free ready psalms 102 verse 13 is a mystery very few people understand please give us psalms 1 or 2 verse 13 read it if you're a child of god one two read
three things mercy time favor mercy time favor thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her even the set time the kairos moment the opportune time is come because of that arise and have mercy let me tell you something about the mercy of god the mercy of god is not an attribute for sinners the salvation of sinners only passed through the mystery of mercy but mercy is more than more than a provision just for sinners to experience salvation you have to understand this the mercy of god is part of the attributes of his person the mercy of god is a system a system in the kingdom where guilty people are made free the mercy of god is a system is a provision in his wisdom his infinite wisdom he factored in a provision although righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne but in his dealings with man he introduced a mystery let me tell you something about mercy look up mercy only works for people who are in time mercy cannot work in eternity <sighs> otherwise satan will not be where he is that's why he says his mercies are new every he ties time to the operation of mercy meaning whenever just like he said as far as the earth remains so when you can see the morning the mercy of god is valid mercy mercy is the attribute of god listen that provokes his help to your life regardless of your satisfying the condition for it or not mercy is a powerful attribute that is the ancient secret that the nation of israel used to turn around battles when they sinned against god god gave them over to their enemies and every time a prophet would intercept there was an enchantment they would have to chant something you are good and your mercy it was not a song it was an invocation every time they started singing that song for he is good and his mercy see how many times the psalmist uses it the psalmist was a benefactor of the mercy of god did everything wrong but every time god want to come in he will remind him the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love the bible tells us that the lord's mercy can triumph come on now that the lord's mercy can triumph over judgment so when i get to the end of my road i know that i am deserving of everything should happen that should happen yes my father sacrificed to idols yes my carelessness i am not a tighter i am qualified for financial bankruptcy the last card i danced it did not work i prayed it did not work the attribute for bailout is invoking the mercy of god you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah samson lost his strength to delilah the bible says his eyes were plucked the symbol of light in his life and the mystery that surrounded his power his hair shoven completely and they took him the bible says they took him to their temple to make mockery of god everything was over but at samson leaned there they didn't watch the hair grow he said oh lord he cried for mercy and the moment he did that see there is one prayer god cannot say no to if you have never been confident of a prayer that will be answered try the prayer of mercy invoke mercy 
Lord, I know I am undeserving of this. But I invoke your mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy. Listen. It is of the Lord's mercy. Meaning, my lifetime is too fast for me to not have made a mistake. But it is of the Lord's mercy. Somewhere in my work, he creates a system, a provision. See, let me tell you. It is on grounds of this that the Bible can say, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For when you think, Ah, there was a time his car now had an accident. Will he ever rise again? Don't go. Ah. The worst witchcraft in your life is to stop you from receiving God's mercy. You are finished. Mercy. And Samson pushed. And the Bible says he killed more people at his death than his lifetime. What of blind Bartimaeus? Thou son of David. Hold on. He never said heal me. The Bible says God will give us the desires of our heart. I thought it would be thou son of David heal me. He said thou son of David have mercy. Mercy is an open check. And God had to come. He left and came. Thou son of David. There were two condemned criminals on the cross. Condemned. Once you hang on that cross it's over for you. Two condemned criminals. One was talking nonsense. Like many people are still doing. They are quarter to finish in life. And they are still making noise. And the other one provoked his mercy. And he said this day, today, not tomorrow. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Are we together? Listen. The mercy of God is an attribute you need in your life. It's not for sinners. The mercy of God was designed in your work with him to remedy for your limitations. There is such a thing as limitation. If I tell you every anointing that is in my life is just because of prayer and fasting, I will be lying. No. I have mastered the art of God's mercy. Years ago, during a pastor's, a pastor's conference, the ministers were lying down and praying and the minister who was testifying this said he went to lie down close to Papa Deboe to hear the prayer he was praying and he said for over two or three hours all Papa Deboe was saying was mercy mercy Lord you would think he stole church money he knew he understood to pastor millions of people you don't just need anointing you need mercy Jesus met a woman by the well. When he met that woman by the well, they started a conversation. Number one, that woman was a prostitute. Correct? And then because of that, the disciples, oh, no, 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 don't come and corrupt Jesus. You are a bad woman. And Jesus started talking with her. And she started touching his mercy. And at the end of it, that woman ran and said, come and see the man who has told me what I have done. Mercy. Mercy vetoes everything in your life. And when the door settles, you are still standing. That's why you see, those who know this, when people are dancing and saying, the power of my might has given me this. Oh, this great ministry, Koinonia, Apostle, what wisdom. You are such an anointed man. I just laugh and look at them. You need to hear my prayer in the secret place. The mercy of God. When David, one day, the Bible says, when kings go for war, David was meandering his balcony, correct? And he looked at somebody's wife, she was baffing. And from the altitude, he could see her nakedness and he desired her. The Bible says he sent and they fetched that woman and they came. He now got a man's wife pregnant and ordered that they go and call Uriah in the heat of war. Not minding whether the nation of Israel would die. They carried Uriah and brought Uriah. Uriah said, my king, I'm here. He says, I just wanted you to come and have you seen your wife recently? Uriah said, ah, 
have you forgotten the ordinances of israel i should be there in the heat of battle and he got angry and all he did listen was to write a letter a man's own death sentence and gave him to the battle and the painful part is that he died question what was the difference between Cain and David Cain killed Abel blood started crying meaning when David killed Uriah blood should be crying correct David went wept 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 when all of that happened you would think that after the, the child died you will now tell the wife it's okay go I will marry you again who was the mother of Solomon <laughs> he did it again correct is David that will write his sins and ask them to sing it as a song if it had not been the Lord by my side now may Israel say if it had not been the Lord he will ask the nation of Israel to chorus for his mercy shall endure ever faithful ever sure and they will begin to sing it God want to destroy David David would just find he knew how to just tie God down and God said this is a man after my own heart a man that understand not even Moses was called a man after his heart mercy this is what our families need this is what we need this is what many ministries need this is what many businesses need let me tell you something we are rounding up there is a system to be a recipient of God's mercy number one a broken and a contrite heart write it down arrogant people are never qualified to be the benefactors of God's mercy For as long as you think by yourself and in your strength you are qualified and deserving you will never have it great is your mercy towards me your loving kindness towards me your tender mercy i see day after day the blood we invoke his mercy for you to sit down and believe your forefathers did not do anything you are a joker but the mercy of God has a way of exempting you the mercy of God has a way of exempting you from the rubbish and the nonsense that should be your lot the mercy of God can change any negative prophecy over any man's life regardless of what was seen about you A particular prophet now came and met David correct and then started to speak to him in parables there was a certain man who had a vineyard and somebody somebody came and grabbed the vineyard and David said who is that was angry say you are the one no watch this do you know David was supposed to die we have a series on mercy that we'll deal with. I don't want to go there. But do you know when you read that scripture, when David asked for mercy, God said that death had been taken from him. David would have died. David would have died. The wages of sin is not sickness. The wages of sin is death. But mercy, but 
but mercy but mercy there are some of you here legally you are supposed to be failures in life so based on that concoction those who knew you had the gods to even prophesy it and what they were saying is right but mercy when you introduce mercy to the equation calculation changes everything changes so a murderer like Moses could now become a deliverer by the mercy and the grace of God he said it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed let me tell you one of the greatest ways to break causes hear me one of the greatest ways to end causes is to invoke the mercy of God the mercy of God the mercy of God over your life invoke the mercy of God over the works of your hands the moment even as human beings if somebody tells you sorry if I look at you now come and make up I look at you and I say look you know you did this and I'm supposed to deal with you and all of a sudden you kneel down and say sir I am sorry do you not know that this position paralyzes me at once I look at you and say ah, I hate you but you have done something now that ah, on a very good day what I plan to do for you I would have dealt with you I would have humiliated you I would have made sure your career were miserable but mercy and the terrible thing about all the well not terrible in righteousness about mercy is that every time mercy is invoked it not only solves the current problem it promotes you mercy will always lift mercy will always lift it will not just take away the current predicament but it will lift you and take you higher higher by the mercy and the grace of God by the mercy and by the grace of God so it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon Joshua Selman upon Koinonia for the time the time the Lord wants to lift me but there are certain levels of light and illumination I do not yet know and if I'm to wait until I know all those things I may never rise so he introduces his mercy and I rise to realms that even me I know that is beyond my level of understanding the mercy of God you will find yourself in the company of people you know your age and your level in life should not bring you their skills brought them but the mercy of God took you there as we travel around I have seen the honor of God by the grace of God and it never stops humbling me when I see the things that people do on account of their perception of the grace of God upon my life sometimes I stand by the mirror and I look I say except for the mercy of God who dash monkey banana who really dash monkey banana you see it's not false humility it's an acknowledgement of truth the mercy of God you are there boasting about being an entrepreneur and you don't have up to 100,000 in your account you better realize that there is a dimension of the mercy of God in this equation that can arise and lift you are you hearing what I'm saying there is a dimension in ministry I believe in principles I teach principles here but let me tell you the truth there are many gaps in this equation to success that we are still learning how it works there are still gaps and one thing I've learned is that those gaps are provisions that only God can fill that's where his mercy comes in and he amplifies and multiplies little things and your life becomes a sign and a wonder because I have seen women who never train their children the children eight children all of them became great they got born again five are pastors all of them are millionaires they love God they are wonderful people walking in the ways of God 
but the woman and her husband don't know jack about parenting that one is not wisdom again let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength the bible says but let him that glory had glory in this that he understandeth that and knoweth me when you know him you know he's full of compassion and mercy i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good I learned certain principles I knew now I was already getting their results when I learned the principle I knew that truly favor and the mercy of God really qualifies the unqualified I have seen levels of breakthrough in my life that happened before I knew the principles that brought them yes this is true way before I understood principles of church growth and increase I had been seeing the hand of God and it's, there is a science to growth if you don't know it it should not happen but mercy 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 tonight we are going to invoke mercy upon our lives upon our families and take away this air of pride that makes you think I have to marry because I'm beautiful I think I'm intelligent I should be a millionaire by now the pride of men is the reason why they never get qualified for mercy one of the most powerful mysteries of exemption against causes against yokes listen i've seen people at jimmy they are not even born again yet but sincerely you know they call it in house affairing jimmy you've seen that happen they take their names to the Habalis and the Habalis will reject it and they are not born again. They don't love God. They don't know him. But their hearts are so sincere. Somehow they know there is a God out there and whoever it is, they are grateful to him. And God says, protect them. Regardless of the fact that they are not prayerful, their hearts are wicked, yet God protects them. I've seen drunkards on the road that would drink to stupor and enter their car and drive safely back home they never fear death and somehow you even pray and say you're a wicked man god will deal with you but you'll find out that 10 years that guy is still drowsing his way in this world and not dead they never fear anything they hear that there is crisis bomb will explode where you know they are in the night you still see him back safe and hale and hearty you didn't die and he laughs That guy doesn't take communion. That guy has never attended prayer meeting. That guy has never attended miracle service. He doesn't even know what his genotype is. Honestly, he doesn't know whether he's sick or healthy. All he knows is that his heart is a sincere heart and it cries out to God. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing. This is what has kept some of our parents so because you know that if it's based on keeping the principles of the kingdom they would have died since it would have it would have swallowed them if the lord had not been by my side now may israel say i think of what men would have done to me when i didn't know the principles of restoration when i didn't know the principles of long life I imagine what would have happened and I wonder how many things I do not know now that I will know in the future how I walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death yet his mercy keeps me if all else fail invoke his mercy I give you a formula if all else fails invoke his mercy you have submitted names for prayer requests and nothing has happened lord mercy for my family 
they are all sinners mercy for my family mercy for this yoke of darkness that is destroying men nobody in my family is making it and on legal basis the devil has his hold upon them and if you try to talk to them the painful part is they won't listen to you because the god of this system has blinded their minds but you can invoke mercy invoke mercy invoke mercy Are you blessed tonight? I want you to sing for me the stanza of that song. Himela, Himela, Okaka, help me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who knows the stanza? Stanza of the song. That's what I really want to hear. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day, I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy. Oh, hallelujah. To receive the kind of love that you give. But I'm grateful for your mercy
result of your prayer life things that are attributes of his mercy and benevolence if you are ashamed of it you are not a candidate for mercy tonight And you are about to use it now ha. and he showed me joshua the high priest standing before the lord and the accuser came before him attempting to rail accusations and he said is this not a reed that i have taken out of fire and he said the lord rebuke you listen the mercy of god is a weapon you can use it and say satan I know you are supposed to destroy me but what about this i present to you the mercy of god i present to you the blood of the eternal covenant i present to you the advocacy of jesus at the right hand of the father standing and speaking i present to you the sinless blood i present to you calvary Lift your voice. Invoke mercy. Hey, Invoke mercy. Repeat every voice. Every voice. The voice of answer. The voice of winner. The voice of failure. The voice of failure. Hallelujah. Hear me. Tonight you are going to use it as a weapon over the devourer. I know I've not been a tighter. You are authorized to destroy me. But see the blood. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. You should be destroyed. But the blood will speak. Hear me. You live the wayward life. And all kinds of things happen. And the earth cries against you. But when I see the blood. When I see the blood. You were involved in all kinds of blood covenants and fraternities in ignorance but now that you are in Christ when I see the blood lift up your voice and plead the blood hey! invoke mercy come on now invoke mercy Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting 
there are handwritings there are records kept in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not live long there are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not be blessed there are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not have any child again the devil says you wasted all your children and all of them have gone there is a record in the realm of the spirit that says you have misused all the opportunities that you were given but tonight plead the blood it can blot it out come on now it can blot it out Pata Hallelujah. Was he praying? Hear me. A cause, causeless, shall not stand. A cause, causeless. So if the blood of Jesus takes away the legal access, the effect must leave me too. Open your mouth and declare every pattern. You have been blotted. You need my life. Patterns of barrenness. Patterns of failure. Come on now, Koinonia, are you praying? Listen, listen, listen. Listen. When you activate this, you will find out that no longer will there be an accusation to say, oh, you once in, were in the world, you committed 19 abortions and blood is speaking and that's why your life is not moving. It should not move. But now that you have invoked mercy, it makes the cause causeless. That means it should not come again. Are we together? You stole money. Help them, please. And all of that, you destroyed another person's destiny. But now that you are in Christ, what of the blood? He showed me Joshua the high priest. Please take seriously. This is what I did for my own life, oh. Let me tell you. For we rise to our access to mysteries in the kingdom. I want to pray for you. But we are going to pray one more prayer point. Hear me. The Bible says, the scripture we started in. Give us that scripture again, Lamentations. 5 verse 7. Please quickly, we want to pray and then we'll round up. Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 7. Our fathers have seen and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. But now, if I appropriate the revelation that I've been called out of every tribe 
out of every tongue out of every nation i can't go to hell because i, I was born in kogi or i was born in plateau state i did ask them to do witchcraft and now that they have done it if the land is caused i exempt myself i can't be a victim of another man's wickedness listen i like you to pray with all your heart and say i begin a new order a new order dissociated from the past alienated from witchcraft and causes and yokes by the blood of the eternal God. Koinonia, are you praying? Alienated. Every biological deformity. Every genetic deformity. Pray. Every yoke that made you S S that made you A S that gave you hepatitis. It must go tonight. The spirit of lust, the spirit of failure, the spirit of failure, the spirit of failure, the spirit of failure, the spirit of Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. This is our year of triumph. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. I want to pray for you. Listen, let me tell you. If God be God, everything that you're carrying, I don't care whether it's self-inflicted, you have invoked the blood. The blood provokes the compassion of the Christ. His advocacy at the throne of the Father does not happen automatically. It happens in response to an incense sent from the earth. The same way his high priest, priestly ministry, the Bible says is in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek did not speak until he had an encounter with Abraham and he gave him a tenth of all. I want to pray for you now because there are lives and destinies under the yoke of witchcraft. Koinonia remains an uncomfortable place for them until it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be lifted from off your neck and the yoke from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. I stretch my hands right now. You hear me? I'm hearing in my spirit household wickedness and the fire of God is falling upon all who are victims of that. I stretch my hands right now. Let it be. Shabbos kupadabash. Lekreteke toko soto balakata. Shepreketeke toko suta bariatakata. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Inside, outside, I stretch my hands. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, be free right now from activities of witchcraft. Hallelujah. Demonic activities. Strangers coming to you in the night to sleep with you. Men, women, animals, and all kinds of things. Coming to destroy you, plant rubbish in your body. I pray right now. In the name of Jesus, anyone who is a victim of every kind of manipulation in dreams, caused as a result of ancestry, right now in the name of Jesus, I command freedom, I command liberty, I command freedom, I command liberty. The blood speaks right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, The earth is cursed for your sake. He says, With the sweat of your brows shall you eat. But the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, He says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the
the promise i want to speak and set you free there is a cause of hardship many people are victims of this cause hardship has nothing to do with poverty listen carefully many people here you are standing representing your families as i pray and right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus the son of the living god i stretch my hands right now i command that yoke be taken from off your shoulder help them please be taken from off your shoulders be taken from off your shoulders right now in the name of jesus i command that cause of hardship be taken from off your shoulders in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ hear me i declare to you a dimension of ease you have never seen in your life step into it right now in the name of jesus christ every yoke of this favor bad luck that looms around the life of men and women here so that you never rise is like a veil on your face and anyone who sees you works against you I command that veil be taken off right now be taken off right now be taken off right now in the name of Jesus Christ and Cain said my punishment is too great he said I have become a fugitive and a vagabond he said all who see me will slay me all who see me will slay me all who see me will slay me whether they are strangers something upon me makes all who see me to slay me any mark any mark upon your life upon your business upon your ministry that keeps attracting woes keeps attracting scandals keep attracting negativism right now in the name of jesus that might be blotted forever be blotted forever be blotted forever any strange sickness in your body through your blood that came from ancestry genotypes ss jacatosia as there's no such reality in the realm of the spirit that provision does not exist is a manipulation from the second heavens altering the genetics of men but right now in the name of jesus every blood related issue passed to you by covenant i blot it out of your body right now i blot it out right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the classic sign of curses and yokes is the presence of patterns you usually are not the first to experience that but i want to prophesy right now i don't know what patterns you have seen around your life you have seen around your finances you have seen around your work with god you are up today down tomorrow you are serious today on serious tomorrow you love the lord today you love something else tomorrow your ministry rises today crashes tomorrow your finances is up today and is blown like the wind in the name of jesus the bible says every house is built by some man but god is the builder therefore i decree and declare that any pattern any spiritual construction that was built by an agency other than the Christ in the name that is above all names I command a tearing down and a rebuilding now a tearing down and a rebuilding now a tearing down and a rebuilding now a tearing down and a rebuilding now
I announce to the realm of the spirit whatever should have happened to your life by now for good but because of the presence of these embargoes there are dimensions you should have entered in Christ there are levels of growth levels of advancement and influence and wisdom and access that you should have been a custodian of by grace and for whatever reason certain objections have risen in the realm of the spirit to stop you in the name of Jesus Christ I provoke restoration right now 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 I pray over your life and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and the Bible says Elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel I want to speak speed in your life I don't know what tied you down by now according to the program of God for you you should have entered certain levels you should have been the mother of four children now but you are yet to have one therefore I command speed step into it right now in the name of Jesus I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Last prayer point I want to pray for you for there is an unction that can come on a man there is an anointing that can produce an outcome that is not available in the earth there is an anointing that is called the breaker anointing the yoke destroying there is such a provision in the kingdom to not only be set free but to be a possessor of a spiritual substance that is capable of causing everyone within the influence of your grace to come under the influence of the liberty that you possess it's an anointing there is a provision in the dealings of God with men where men can carry atmospheres that have prophetic implication to all those who come within the circumference of that atmosphere you will not have the time to pray for everybody but you can carry a climate I want to release a grace and unction upon your life that you will go back home you will go back to regions you will go back to places you will enter your room there are physical territories that are caused but like Mara the water you will pick it and in the name of Jesus you will change that situation like the listen 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 the Bible says that the prophets were eating and they said there is death in this food and he said bring me flour and he put it and said go ahead and eat there is an ability there is an unction that can fetter the plants of darkness in the name of Jesus wherever you are like a mantle may that anointing come upon your life right now Soto Sota Lekre Toskaterika A breaker anointing The grace and the unction Carry the fire Carry the grace Carry the unction Command deliverance Make environments cost free In the name of Jesus May your presence Your presence In your home your presence in your office your presence in your ministry sustain an ability to nullify ordinances nullify yokes and causes and enchantment surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of God there is a substance you possess that will disengage everything that is of God receive it now in the name of Jesus
Hear me please. Salvation is the most trusted bailout from every cause and every yoke. According to scripture, it provides a system where men can be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, God's dear son. A system where men can exchange death for his life. And you are here standing listening to me everywhere inside and outside you have never truly made this commitment for Jesus Christ you may be a pastor you may be an elder and then there are others here at one time you were serious with God but for whatever reason your life went haywire and as it is right now you know that you need a restoration you need to run back to Jesus wherever you are for time's sake our time is gone please everyone stand in honor of this altar call I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain as I count one to five this is a serious business I want you to come out right now one everywhere inside and outside quickly please quickly clear the way for them two please run 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 like there's fire on the mountain run like your destiny depends on this decision three are you running those coming from outside? Don't sit back and allow anyone tell you, no, 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 it's, it's just a little issue. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. The Bible says, today if you hear his voice, harden not, harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Four. I still believe there are still people outside rush and join us now quickly rush and join us quickly rush and join us quickly I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I want to salute all of you young man look at me stand up Kai. there is a dangerous spirit that I'm seeing on this guy can you just lay your hand on him Jimmy? just on his back I command that devil you must go now ah, I looked at him and I started seeing I saw a wild animal like a lion before I pray for you look at this look at this this guy gently came here look at this I saw a wild animal a wild spirit salvation is powerful look at this now you come and marry him you see what i'm saying now i'm not saying he's a bad guy this guy may not even know why his life is haywire anger problems that's why men slap and beat their wives and say sorry later and still do it look at how many men are holding him look at this i command you now let him go in the name of Jesus I bring upon you the victory of Christ mm. for the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehended it not be set free every legal access against you 
the blood speaks now out of him and never return this is by mercy and by grace you go and never return I tell you the breakthrough this guy's family will have from this night he's not it's not just him he's representing something stand up look at him look at the same person that five people could not hold come let me lead you listen when you stand to pray huh my friend my sister when you stand to pray you pray with all your heart and you pray it sincerely now all of you standing in front say after me from the dead don't be ashamed my brother you don't have to cry you're a nice person this is koinonia all of you say after me help the little ones let them be sure of what they are saying they are laughing they may not know what they are saying but guide them and let them be serious because it means a lot to god say after me lord jesus you are not reciting a point meaning from the depth of your heart say lord jesus this night i believe that you are the son of god I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin right now I accept your Lordship over my life I receive the gift of righteousness and I declare that I am a child of God I'm born again spirit of the living god come upon my life make me a sign and a wonder i declare that the power of sin the flesh and satan is broken over my life forever in jesus name amen i stretch my hands upon you i declare your sins forgiven I declare in the name of Jesus that every access the devil has over your life is gone by the blood. The Lord gives you a new beginning from today. You rise like an edifice, forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now I want you to follow a gentleman waving his hands. Just turn and follow them. They will give you a few details. They will follow you up. And please comply with them very quickly. The Lord bless you. All of you in concert, please appreciate them as they go very quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.